YouTube. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebayo. There's a lot to talk about tonight on the show. And, of course, uh, as I wait uh, Austin to join, let me just give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show to tonight. Of course, we're going to be talking about the ITT African Tennis Championship. We'll also be looking at football on the foreign scene, the Europa League currently going on, and a whole lot more all for you on Sports Tonight. All right, so uh, Austin is in now. So, Austin, it's good to have you. What a great things to you, Yemi, and of course our viewers, wherever they are in the world, it's good to be on the show. Yes, you talked about table tennis. We talked about it um, last week, particularly because that's one that has to do with, you know, discovering and nurturing young talent in table tennis. And it's also the Western region. And to find out that Team Nigeria is doing so well tells you that the Federation might just be doing something right in terms of, you know, discovering young talent. So we'll talk about that one tonight on the show. It was complete dominance by Nigerian table tennis players. And that one gives me so much joy because we've been talking about this development in the last five years. Also on the show tonight, we should take a look at community sports development. What are those things that uh, communities can do to develop sports in their own ways? We should take a look at that also, Yemi, and every other thing that is going down in our beautiful, exciting world of sports. Yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's going to set the tone uh, for the show tonight. Let me quickly introduce from the Lagos studio, Bolu Amoni joins us on the show tonight. Um, greetings to you, Bolu. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Yeah, good to be again. I like that you talked about the um, ITCF African region. It's almost like it's a Nigerian competition. Everywhere from the singles, men, women to the doubles, it's all about Nigeria. And yeah, this is what we always talk about. Do this thing. When you plan it well, when you invest more, especially in young guys, mm -hmm. this is definitely the result we'll see. All right. So uh, let's start off uh, with what we just uh, talked about. And Austin quite rightly hinted, and uh, Bolu also alluded to that. Uh, it's been a clean sweep of, of some sort for Nigeria. We tend to be doing uh, so well in it. And we're going to see some pictures from uh, the tournament in a bit. But let me just go back to Austin uh, and say, you, you seem quite impressed, like everybody, and um, uh, hoping that all of these uh, little drops of water would gather up and be an ocean. And when I say an ocean, I mean that we're going to begin to see... Uh, uh, do it translate to dominance, not just on the African scene, on the global scene, uh, with regards to table tennis for Nigeria? Uh, with countries such as Ghana, you know, Benin Republic, you know, and the other guys in the region trying to push Nigeria all the way, it was good to see, you know, these young guys go, you know, the distance and prove that, yes, Nigeria can keep, you know, the superiority that they're enjoying in table tennis. Give us an opportunity to talk about this guy, for instance, that I've been saying, what's going on with him? Aziz Sholanke, you know, come, coming back to, you know, prove a point that this competition is a good one. Augustine Emmanuel also doing the same thing. Amadi Omer doing the same thing. These were guys that I was talking about when I was also talking about Tai Mati. This sort of competition, and of course, um, I can be also, this sort of competition has given us an opportunity to remember this guy, see them play table tennis again, and let the Federation put them in the plan. But Yami Bolu, what excites me is the women's category. Guys, remember that in the last two, three years, we've been saying, what are the women doing? You know, the women table tennis players. Fatima Bello has proven a point. She has retained her title, and with the way she played at this competition, she has shown some good level of consistency. That's one girl right there also, uh, Tosin Esther or Riba Michel. So this is just a clear indication that we have the, the talent. We must just do what we can do to make sure that we keep these talents going. Yeah, that's it. And... Um... I, I, guess, I can see Bolu smiling when you started reeling out uh, those names. And I'm hoping that the production line will be intact, that uh, when else we have tournaments like this, we're going to be mentioning other names uh, coming through uh, as well. Bolu, I know you're impressed, but uh, I mean, what can we say? Um, in years to come, do you think we will still be on top with seeing some of these uh, guys coming through, uh, you know? How far do you think our dominance will go? Well, um, it's a ground process. First of all, these guys did well in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. 
Africa. Yeah, you know, doing very well at the regional level. Hopefully, to transcend to Africa. Yeah. And um, remember, we talked about oh, we are done with Bosse Kafo. We are done with um, I can't remember her name that went to our seventh Olympic Games recently. And that these women, they are getting over 46 and there about that. Who is coming up next? Seeing the likes of Bosse, seeing the likes of Fatima Bello, we have hope that okay, we can get there. Mm -hmm. I, I just hope after these guys move ahead from these regionals, we won't be like, well, they've done their best. Let's wait. No, we shouldn't wait till the next event. We should keep training them. We should keep giving them every possible best. I remember training, what grants. Yeah, trainings. I remember what uh, one of our representatives, Agumbi said at the Paralympics, that what he saw when he started going to the Paralympic Games is completely different. The young guys are using modern equipment. That's what we want to see. If these guys train with the modern equipment, maybe there's a different type of bat they use now. If we don't learn, if we don't get used to those things, it's definitely going to be a different ball game at the world level. So, these girls have done well. The guys as well. They've done so. Uh, the finals were Nigerians against Nigerians. Singles, mm -hmm. double, were facing each other. Yeah. And if we bring all these guys together, because I lost the final doesn't mean I'm not good enough. So, if we harness these talents, we'll bring them together, train them well. Who knows? We may be thinking about, yes, we've forgotten about Toriola, but we have new guys that are doing well. Look at what Omotayo is doing for himself. Now, we need to make sure these guys don't just go. And our team tennis is gone complete. So kudos to the organizers. Kudos to those guys that brought these people together. Hopefully, it continues from there to the next level. All right. Uh, Bolly say keep them busy. Give them the grants. Give them the exposure. And before you know it, uh, we're going to have these guys continue to dominate. All right. Let's take some reactions from uh, this event. Uh, of course, uh, we'll come back and talk some more on table tennis in Nigeria. Because the tournament wasn't an easy one. So because everybody has come from all over Western region to represent their countries. And firstly, I'm so grateful to have represented my states and my country rather. So it's a privilege for me. And winning the tournament also, I think I worked for it. I worked for it because it, since they told me that they will be having this tournament will hold and they told me that I will be representing the country that I'm among those that we represent. So since then, I have to double up my training. Though I've been training before, but I have to double it up so that possibly I can become victorious. But now, winning the tournament, I'm very happy. Meeting him firstly in the final, I know it's going to be a tough game. Because even the ITTF tournament that was played in July, that I won, I also met him in semi-final. It was same way, this way. He was leading me 3-2 before I now came back to meet him 3-3 and I later on. So even meeting him now, even in this tournament also, this is the third time we'll be meeting. In the group stage, in the team event. So I meet him, so I won. So we both qualified from the group and we later won all our matches. So we met in final also, in the team final. So he has to won. That was yesterday. I won him the day before yesterday. And now again meeting in the singles final, I know it's not going to be an easy one for me. But well, I thank God that I won the tournament. I'm very grateful. Because I used to, I used to train every time, so it's not the game is not a big deal for me to play. Like it's not that much for me to play. Because I used to train, so I'm used to it. I feel very happy about it. Though I was expecting it because I've been training for the competition, so I was expecting a good result. So I'm happy about it. All right, you listen to Rewan Akambi, uh, the men's singles champion, Fatima Bello, the women's singles champion, all bearing their mind, and of course, very happy and elated that it turned out that um, they won uh, the tournament. All right, we need to go for a quick time out. Uh, we're going to take a time out. When we return, Austin hinted uh, about community development, using sports, and all of that. We're going to go into that when we come back from this time out we're about to take to get into that discussion.
right, welcome back. And like I said, we're going to go into uh, discussion about uh, community games, using uh, the games to, uh, you know, develop talents, nurture talents to start them. Uh, and of course, uh, we have uh, with us in the studio, uh, Sheung Ayeni. He just he joins us as we have that uh, discussion. Sheung, uh, thanks for finding out time to be here with us on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, we had an interesting discussion, and uh, Bolu and I were smiling. You were explaining some things to us. <laughs> well, first, let, let's understand Amuro Games. We've, you've done two editions now, and you talk about, you know, community-based sports events. So what's it all about? Uh, yeah, you know, Amuro Games started, uh, started as a reaction to something. So there was this election in 2017 that, that didn't go down well with people. And so, you know, you know Amuro is a bit... Um, not one-sided so it was getting heated up and we're seeing the energy of the youths buzzing so we thought of it what can we use to distract or rather engage these youths let's try take their focus their energy and put it into something positive positive. and what we came up together with we, we i and a group of friends we came up with them um, sports and that's how more games was born you know we we said let's use sports to make people use their energy in a positive way. So we came up with sports. We wanted to make it a football competition. Then we thought of it, okay, not everybody likes football. So why not include other sports? And that's why we went for 16 more sports. No, 15 more sports. And we made it 16 sports. That's 16 tournaments. We had football, basketball, volleyball, chess, scrabble, swimming. And um, in some, um, the, 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 the second edition, we even started adding more games. We added the cycling tournament in 2019. And now this is 2021. You've held two editions now. Yeah, the first one was in 2017. Then we had one in 2019, which was where we added cycling. Now we are adding um, five aside soccer tournament in 2021 because we have to improve every every time we do. What it. got my attention? Um, I'm, I'm about to bring in um, Austin, but but let me just ask you this: What got my attention is the fact that uh, it's a non-profit initiative. Yeah. First, and the fact that you engage all the youths in the community. Those two things are like two parallel lines. How you make it work is what I'm interested in. Uh, yeah, you know, the division, the vision was born out of that, that place. So it's easy for us to achieve it. We, we, we came together, like I said, as a group of youths. So we know ourselves. We said to ourselves, let's do this thing. And so we started bringing our monies from our pockets, you know, individually. Okay, who knows how to... Blow, um, officiate football, who knows how to do this. But then we now even went further. We went to Lagos State Sports Commission to get their endorsement, to get their support. Then it was being led by um, late Neji Chidubu. So we got his support, and his team went with us to help us organize the first one. He gave us the officials from each of the sports, you know. So it was easy for us to, to actualize these games, and it has been easy since then. Okay, uh, all right. Um, I'm very sure Austin asked, asked a question or two uh, as well. So, Austin, the floor is yours. Uh, uh, Sean, good to have you on the show. I remember we, we had this conversation in 2019, and I yeah. must say, well done with what you're doing. Uh, Sean, what's been the level of response from the people of Amor Dauphin as regards uh, this, this competition that you put together? Amazing. I tell you, amazing. In fact, before we brought out any form of advertisement this year, I mean, around September, we already had 400 registered athletes from our wow. registration portal. Then after the announcement started, of course, you understand the, the thing went, I mean, the, the, the registration went exponential. So, so, yes, the response has been huge. People are in different groups now discussing the games. We split them into the different WhatsApp groups for their teams. Of course, we split everybody into eight teams. You know how we did in 2017. According to where you live, you get zoned into your own team. So from your own team, we created a WhatsApp group for you. You go and discuss with your team members. So everywhere is just buzzing. The whole of Abu is talking about Abu games right now. Awesome, beautiful. And these pictures, uh, you're giving me a very beautiful feeling because I grew up in this area in Festa yeah. Town. We called it we call this Suki, you Suki know, where we play this basketball, also play five aside. But which of the sports has really, you know, particularly seeing young kids, which of the sports has 
has gotten um, the level of um, participation that you can call encouraging? Uh, for, for me, I think chess, I didn't know a lot of kids like chess. I mean, mm -hmm. the on, we are, we, some of our games are age-graded, and one of them is chess. Chess is age-graded. We have the under-17, we have the under-13. And we've seen serious participation in the under-13 categories for chess, and then swimming, too. Swimming has been impressive, too. Okay, uh, so uh, I, also, I also want to ask this. You, while we're having this chat before you, you came on, yeah. you said you're looking beyond where you are, where you currently are now. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking of going, because of the success of what you've done, yeah. in Google, you're thinking of going to other communities as well. Yeah, so, so maybe not even me. Maybe, maybe we just want other communities to replicate okay. what we're doing. So. Of course, if, if, you, if, if you are strong enough and you want to do it, fine, why not? Let's replicate it in every community in Nigeria and, and we'll see what grassroots, grassroots spot can become. Um, if you need us to get, get our templates, to use our templates for you, we can always come around. But then we want to encourage every community in Nigeria to emulate this. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me allow Bully say something as well. Uh, you, you were listening to everything he said. And... It's a novel idea, really. Well, I know how difficult it is uh, planning things that has to do with young people because I've worked with the Asato Shola Foundation and my church also did grassroots. So I know how difficult it is and I know it's always beautiful when you see the success stories, especially when you see young people, probably one or two persons that pass through you, that you see them maybe with the national team or doing good um, here and there. But I, I hope the challenges are not too much, especially finance, because no matter how much people decide to do things for free, people will still be like, eh, at least officials, even if it's tea fair, yeah. like, they also hope the challenges you, for you know. finance are not too strenuous. Yes, um, the first two editions, yes, of course, the first edition, people will always wonder what, what you are mm -hmm. about. So yeah. they, they are skeptical when you approach them. But the second edition, okay, they watch you again like, okay, let's just see what they will do again. Mm -hmm. So those first two editions were a bit stressful. This third edition, we've had support from community members right. and, and some, or some bodies. Yeah. People have personally come okay. out to say, give, take this and use it All for right. the games, you know? I'll bring so. my community to challenge them more. <laughs> <don't worry>. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we need to go on a break around right about now. Just this discussion we're having on uh, uh, grassroots sports development, using, uh, talking about community games. But we need to go on a break around right about now. When we return from that break, still so much for you on Sports Tonight. Uh, welcome back. We have Shion Ayani with us, uh, Bola Money too, still with us. We're talking about the Amo uh, games. And um, before we let you go, um, what are the di innovations, different things that people should expect? Those who have seen the first two editions and are looking forward to the third one, wh what are the things that might be different that yeah. they should look forward to? We're working on the opening ceremony this time. We want to make it more colorful, mm -hmm. of course. So expect a very colorful opening ceremony which is on this, this Saturday. Um, um, so expect a very colorful one. Of course, I also say we're adding a new game, the Five for Side Soccer, mm -hmm. which we've not had before. And this time around, we're having it on a proper tough, football tough. It's going to be very, very nice. It's, it's, it's going to be colorful too. So, so expect those two things at least, uh, apart from the fact that we're going to make our arrangements better this time around. Okay. All right, Shemayini, I want to thank you for your time on the show today and uh, wish you well in all that you do. Thank you. To develop sports. Thank you very much. Suit. Okay. All right. So, uh, we're talking about um, the Amuo Games. We're talking about uh, community based sports uh, development initiatives. We need to take another time out. And when we uh, come back, we want to quickly uh, talk about what's going on in the Europa League, how uh, Super Eagles players. You know, fed what happened. Uh, so we we'll talk about all of that, but take a quick time out and uh, come back for more.
highlights from the just concluded ITTF Africa um, Regional Championship. All right, so uh, let's move on on the show. Austin, where do we go? Uh, I think it's uh, time to talk about the women, the CAF Women's Champions League, and of course, the inaugural edition. We're part of it, and we're hoping our, our representatives will go all the way. I love it. And um, Rivers Angels, they are already in Cairo. Uh, it's the maiden edition of the CAF Women's, um, uh, Women's Cup of um, CAF Women's CAF Champions League, Women's Champions League. So we need to really get into this because it's new. I was uh, on Twitter Spaces uh, with um, uh, organized by the Confederation of African Football and former Nigerian uh, superstar Messi Akide was there. And she said something very important. She said, this sort of competition will make countries take club women's football very seriously. And I totally agree because now this is a big deal. Teams who want to prepare properly, you know, get out there, play with the best teams in Africa. It will open up opportunities for, for the girl child. It will make um, the administrators of the sports in the, on the continent to give it the same attention that uh, we receive uh, from the men. So we've got the men's CAF Champions League and CAF Confederation Cup. Now we've got the Women's CAF Champions League, and it's such a delight that Nigeria has a representative in Rivers Angels, uh, a team that has, you know, pushed. And through the qualifiers, I mean, I was impressed with the way they, you know, made their way to uh, this stage where they are in Cairo. So just want to wish Rivers Angels all the best as they start their campaign in the CAF Women's Champions League. All right, and um, I, I do agree with you. They're not, they not lacking in motivation at all. We're wishing they go all the way. Let's quickly show the fixtures. Uh, they, they begin their campaign this weekend. So let's show uh, to our viewers the fixtures of the matches that they will. Uh, Bolu, on your screen, you have uh, the huddles. They have to cross Saturday, uh, November 6th. They will be up against Asfa Club uh, of Morocco. They'll be up against Ma Mamelodi Sundowns, a uh, club from South Africa, and uh, Rivers Angels. They will also be up against... Uh, Vihiga Queens, uh, a team from Kenya. So uh, you, you can also see some of these uh, illustrious big clubs have a women's team. So when you see Rivers Angels and Mamalodi Sundowns, it's not the men's squad. But um, I mean, tough, tough. These huddles are really strong huddles. Well, well, on paper, you should expect, on paper, Rivers Angels to go through. But like what we've seen even from the national team, Everyone has grown past what we saw the last. I just hope, first of the distraction of their coach being discarded for Falcons will not be, affect them. Mm -hmm. But aside that, I, I think um, they know the whole do. They know what's at stake. Remember, they lost the final game in the regional. So I'm sure they should know that everything is not a walk in the park. So I, I believe Rivers and Yale should be well prepared for this. Because remember, the governor of the state gave them a promise. If they mm -hmm. qualify their life will change. <laughs> and I'm sure their life will probably change for more yeah. if they win this event. So they, they know what's at stake. They know what it means. And the, if they win this event, there's a better chance of some or more of their players getting into the national team with Super Falcon. So I believe they'll give it everything. I believe they'll give it a go. They'll give all they can. I wish them all the best, but no how do this easy. From the success or success we've seen with Mamelodi Sundowns, the male team in recent years, I'm not sure anyone wants to underrate the women's team. I don't think anyone will. So I think they know what's on ground. I think they know what to do. But like every tournament, the first game is always very, very mm -hmm. important. Pick all three points if possible, then you gain confidence to go through the rest of the tournament. All right. Uh, uh, I say again, uh, our best wishes to Rivers Angels. Hopefully, they'll get uh, the job done. All right, Austin, still talking about uh, the girls, the ladies. Uh, let's talk about uh, Coach uh, Christopher Danjuma um, inviting 31 players into the Falconers squad uh, as they continue uh, their campaign uh, for a slot at the FIFA Women's World Cup. And, um, you know, it's easy to want to take it for granted that at this level, the gap may be closing at the senior level, but at this level, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe no African team comes close. But there is a danger of getting complacent. Yes, yeah, me, and and this is the stage where we can use to uh, we can use this level, the four college level, to make it formidable at the Super Four stage. Because the players you get here, they get to aspire to play 
at a top level, which is the Super Four Cons. But shout out to the Four Cornets uh, for getting to the stage of the Women's World Cup qualifier. Um, I, I, I don't have any, any any fears about them, you know, qualifying. Uh, what I want to see is the level of consistency that is shown. And of course, you, you just use the word that at this stage, they, they can't afford to be complacent. Yes, they can't afford to be. So they need to keep keep it going. Coach Christopher Dungeon has done very good with this team. I'm not sure with the players that he has invited, you have a good look and see uh, those players that will be good enough to, you know, to make it to, to the final uh, stage uh, uh, that you would want them to be as you guys qualifying for the, for the Women's World Cup. And um, Bolu, <laughs> no disrespect to Congo, <laughs> but it's Congo. <laughs> and, that, that, and I agree with Osley. He shouldn't give us sleepless nights. Uh, but then again, when you invite 31 players uh, to camp, uh, it shows the coach wants competition. Uh, and um, I, always, I always like it at this level. And the fact that we could call up 31 female football players at under 20 just shows the abundance of talent at the disposal of uh, anybody who is the coach of the Falcons. And to even make it better, uh, most are underage for men. Many or most of the players who call or the boys who get are always from academies. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, but these girls are playing for club sides. Many of them, or all of them are from clubs. Even two or three of them are foreign based players. It shows to a level we are growing. I just hope our growth is well properly planned because most of the time, yeah, we know we are moving, but we're at the play. Look at the girls there. You see Bayosa, Quincy, Robo. I think even River Rivers have one or two players in this squad. All these girls have lots of experience. I remember what we did to Central African Republic. So I, I don't think Congo should be our biggest threat. I don't think they should be our biggest fears. But again, you have to still do the job. No matter who you are coming up with, you still have to play your game. So I think they have what it takes to win. I think they have all it takes to progress. Uh, you would think even Nadoze could be part of this squad and still do well, but there are lots of girls here that you believe have what it takes. At least I've seen one or two of them play for their club size and uh, they were good enough. So I, I think, uh, like really, so having 31 players for under 20, not the men, the women, shows we've grown to a level. And hopefully, uh, that's Chris Danjuma's headache. He needs to find a way to stream it down to the 23 that will be needed for the Congo game. But I think, irrespective of who plays that Congo game, we should still do it. Like we're talking about Falcons. The Falcons not being at the World Cup will be a big shame. Mm -hmm. And these are the kind of games we need to win to have a chance of qualifying for the Nations Cup and going to the World Cup. Yeah, yeah that's Bolu, it. Let me, get you, let me get you, you know, talking on this because I've been getting some messages from um, former players. The first leg will be played on December the 5th. They've been told to report to camp the players uh, on the 7th, which is about three days from now. Is that enough time to prepare? Let's disregard that it is Congo. Is that enough time to prepare for this crucial stage? Well, um, there's never enough time, but I, I think for under 20, many of them could be playing for national teams in different countries. If you check, under-20s are no underage anymore, kind of. They're just probably not the best for the national team. I think a month should be good enough. The fact that some or many of them are playing for top clubs in Nigeria, so the experience is now is not the problem. Remember before they played Central African Republic, they were camp for, I think, about six weeks. So some of them are used to playing together. It's just about, okay, now we need to get uh, prepared again, come together, let's train even more. And they need just more of synergy together because they played together before. If not all of them, most of these girls have been together for a while. They spent six weeks on camp in the previous game. So it's just about, okay, let's bring up what we had. Let's bring up the love, the synergy, the trainings, the teamwork we had in the previous event. So I think one month is good. Remember, like we said earlier, some of them play for their clubs and, and it won't be fair on those clubs when they take away their player for two, three months just to prepare for the national team. So I, I think a month is good enough for the girls, not disrespecting Congo, but for them to just come together and uh, do the business on the day. Okay, because Yemi is always concerned about the gap closing. So these are some of the things we need to put into consideration, you know, uh, because because is under 20 and we've dominated that part, I understand. We also crushed Central Africa Republic 11-0 on aggregate, but then Teams are getting to know that if you want to be respected in Africa, particularly women's football, with Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, but the firepower. Uh, no. You know, look, I, I, a part of me will want to say, oh, uh, let's not get complacent. The gap is closing at senior level, yes. But if you look at the firepower, 
you, you have girls in this team that are part of Rivers Agents. You have <laughs> girls who, <laughs> who are good enough <laughs> to be in the Super Falcons. So uh, I, I understand what you're saying about complacency. I'll be, I'll be the first to, to say it too. But not today. <laughs> not, not this time. <laughs> not this time. Maybe some other times. But it's but a warning that should be taken seriously. I like seriously. the confidence. I like yeah, the well. confidence <laughs> it, but shows, I... it shows that the future looks good. Yes. Because the yes. Flamingos, they, they, we have that same confidence. The four corners. It is a super four corners now that is making us. Uh, yeah. yeah. That means a lot of work we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Uh, we, we hopefully... They'll cross the huddle, and you know, for a lot of people, the, the, the next big thing for the Falconet is to go on and win the World Cup. We've, been, we've played at the final, in the final twice. So, um, qualifying, uh, a lot of people would think that maybe we'll close our eyes, and you know, but you know, you, sh you should never think like that in football, you know. But um, ho hopefully, we'll get the job done. Hopefully, we'll qualify, yeah. possibly go on to do what we have not done before. That is, do one better after playing in the final twice. All right, uh, I think we can uh, leave uh, the girls now. And uh, Austin, let's allow you uh, uh, take it from there. Let's talk about the Europa League. And um, right. I, I was, uh, you, you caught me trying to check up on Antonio Conte and Tottenham. Uh, I wanted to see <laughs> how it would start. But, but it appears like it's a good start. It's last time I checked, they're leading 3 1. And. Also, there are some results involving uh, Nigerians. Leon Balogun scored an own goal, but luckily, his side were able, were able to, uh, you know, claw their way back into it. So, uh, take us through some of these uh, results. Yeah, you know, I mean, these things happen with, with football, particularly with defenders. Talking about what happened with Leon Balogun and Rangers, he scored an own goal, but they didn't lose that game against. The drum bay and um, it ended 1 1. Leon defeated Sparta Prague 3 0. The Jar was uh, lost away, lost at home to Napoli. So, Napoli without Victor Simon, they were so good in winning that one 4 1. But this is the thing for me West Ham and their run at the Europa has been nothing but impressive, you know. Going away to you know to gank to, to play 2 2. In fact, they were running off to win that one 2 1 until Sushek scored an own goal, and then it ended 2-2. Otherwise, West Ham would have been traveling back to England, singing and dancing. Monaco and Pierce, we played a goal as draw. It's the Europa League selector results. A lot of games still going on. Um, we'll continue to monitor it, and I'll, I'll give our viewers live updates. But Bolu, let me get you talking. I saw some more results. Real Sociedad won. Aston Graz 0. Olympiacos lost down to Frankfurt 2-1. There's Leicester City and Sparta Moscow. I told you some games still going on. That game is still live. We'll continue to monitor it because we've got a Nigerian interest in that one. Marseille. One last year zero. Abu Bolula, what do you take about West Ham so far in the Europa League? Well, um, first of the uh, Real Sociedad game ended one one. Um, not one new for Sociedad, but for West Ham, the, I have a West Ham friend. Anytime, even if I'm not watching any West Ham game, if I see status, automatically you know West Ham have picked up a point or win that game. They've been very, very, very solid. And what it's shown is uh, probably David Moyes is not as bad as many thought he was. Remember his years at Everton, it took them to, it made them finish in top four. And then Everton didn't even have all the money they are spending and everything. Now with West Ham, they play so impressive. You think they're a mainstream team in the Europa League. Remember, like, right, they almost won this game before a late, late own goal by Socek. They've been solid, they've been impressive. Now, one of the teams anyone doesn't want to play against now, Polo Nacho and his gang teammate, they are solid. They are like a beast in the Belgian league. But when it comes to playing against West Ham United, West Ham made them look like a relegation team. They've been impressive. Watching them in the Premier League, even against top oppositions, you think these guys have been in top four for a long time. I like what David Moyes is doing. I like the fact that Lingard, there was solid rock for them last season, not even with them anymore. And it feels like, well, nothing has changed. They got Declan Rice, Socek, Antonio, Cresswell in defense. All these guys yep. playing, yep. playing beautiful football. One thing is sure, there's only one way for West Ham. It's definitely going to be at the top. I love it because they've shown us the level of consistency that I want to see from a good team, from the league. In fact, so from last season yeah. to this season and now in the Europa. David Moyes deserves some more respect. So continue to monitor what's going on right there in the Europa League. It's still Leicester City 
uh, zero, Sparta Moscow zero down. I told you we have interest in it. I'll continue to monitor it here. Yeah, and we'll continue to monitor the uh, conference league <laughs> as well. Uh, two very popular managers there, Jose Mourinho in there with Roma, Antonio Conte in there with Tottenham. So while you guys were talking about the European League, I was trying to yeah, look at the conference, the conference. But it's to really, see. It's going well for Tottenham. It's so going well for Tottenham. We'll not, not so much for Roma because it's, it's still goalless uh, for now. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to see the level of enthusiasm um, Conte would approach the uh, conference, uh, you know, play, league with, but he, he appears he, he's taking it seriously. And who knows? It might be he, he, anybody. Everybody will want to be the first manager to win uh, a, a trophy. Is a trophy anyway. So, uh, but of course, they would obviously. Particularly, yeah. They particularly would obviously want to be playing. The best yeah. leg, so mm -hmm. he cannot afford. You know, they lead three one now. Mm -hmm. You know, he cannot afford to lose this game because this game was supposed to give him good landing in England, you know. So the one I'm looking forward to is the English Premier League game against Leeds. So let's wait and see how Antonio Conte will continue with this Tottenham team. But just as you were talking, um, the, the opponent scored a goal. So it's 3-2 now. So <laughs> I don't know if you will get a soft landing, but let's see. Uh, a, a lot of people... A lot of people have said Conte has taken a tough job, uh, but there's no, there's no doubt about his managerial credentials. Mm -hmm. Conte is somebody that improves teams. So we're, we're going to see whether or not he's going to really, really improve this Tottenham side who have morale is low, surely. Uh, morale is low at Tottenham, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but let me just bring you uh, into this. I know we're talking about Europa. We shouldn't be talking about the conference, uh, but... There's no way you'll have Antonio Conte and Jose Mourinho in, in a competition and you, you won't talk about it. But Conte, before we go on the break, Conte, what does he need to do? Well, football is weird. They wanted Conte initially in the summer. Conte rejected it for different reasons. Now they have to come back to Conte. Now, I think first off, he needs to bring the guys back. He needs to know if Harry Kane wants to stay or leave. Yeah. Because if there's sadness, if there's unrest in the dressing room, no matter what, if he brings the damn pep, all of them together, they'll be prepared. So first off, he needs to sort out the It's these same guys that have been there for a while. Not that they bought, brought in new players like that to change in recent years. Still, the core players, the Domeles, Harry Kane, Dele Ali, Song Heung-Ming. But what's going on? that is wrong. That's what he needs to sort out. If he needs to let go of Harry Kane, it's a matter of talking to the owner, Danny Levy. This guy needs to go. Because before Harry Kane, while he was out with the rumor of Levy, they were playing well. Yes, they won one nil all three, but one is better than losing two nil. So, until Harry Kane got back, the goals were not coming. They started losing games that got the manager sacked. So, Conte needs to sort out the dressing room first of all, because an unhappy dressing room, no matter your tactical know-how, you definitely have problems. So, I, I think he needs to sort that out first, and he needs to get results. The way sports are right now, the fans don't care how they play anymore. Just win our games, and if possible, win trophies. Now, they were leading three nil, now they are three to the, they are still up three to but the fear will definitely be there. What if we concede? What if we end up drawing or losing this game? But I, I can't wait for his game against Chelsea on New Year's Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be very interesting, by the way. <laughs> All right, we need to go on a break. Uh, when we return from that break, we will talk about the Barcelona situation, and of course, if time permits, we we'll take a look at what is happening at the Paris Masters. Right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes we have left uh, going to the Europa League and also taking a look at the Barcelona managerial situation. Uh, of course, it's no longer news. Uh, Barcelona have showed their hand. They want the club legend Xavi Hernandez back. Al Sahar, the club in um, uh, Dubai, still holding on to the player. And um, let me quickly go to Austin. And uh, it's an interesting situation. And the yeah. question on everybody's lips is how long uh, Xavi has said he wants to go back. He wants to go back home. It's clear. So how long will they be able to hold on? It, it looks like it's inevitable for Xavi to be back uh, at Barcelona, but contract issues, negotiations still, they've not really sorted all of these things out. And the, and the Barcelona legend has said, look, it's between the club and um, his, his, his current employers and Barcelona to, yeah. to meet, to come into an agreement. So 
he can he can he can move but but he's definitely looking forward to going home and uh, you know I mean people have have been throwing doubts around as regarding Zavi the man for this job does he have the experience and I said look what Zavi will be taking back to Barcelona is influence he's a club legend and um he, he will get some respect my friends in England they say look he's just going to become another only kind of structure, you know but I don't think that would be the case I, I think Xavi Javi's mind is in this job and that's the mentality he's going to take into it. And um, there's this joke I always tell people that anybody can coach Barcelona or Real Madrid. You just need to have basic coaching experience, you know, because those are super teams in Spain. But uh, football is changing. 99% of the game is played in the brain now. So um, I like Javi. I think he's got what it takes to, to get the job done. But for now, uh, the negotiations are still ongoing, and uh, hopefully they'll get it sorted and, and the decision will be made. Yeah, uh, we're waiting. But look, Pep Guardiola has come out in the defense of Xavi. And one of the things Pep Guardiola said, Xavi, as he is now, has more experience than he had when he was given a Barcelona job. <laughs> I don't know if he just said that, but some people say what, what he said is true. Well, we've seen things like that work uh, with Pep himself. We saw it work with Zidane. But the same that we've seen it turn out uh, the other way. Disastrous. Like uh, Austin's friend, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. <laughs> and so it, it, sometimes those things you never can tell until it happens. Javi, like what Bruno said last week, that Javi's well respected at the club. He'll bring calm, he'll bring nerve. Okay, at least everyone will come down. For a while, even if the while. results exactly. are so not going if the, his results are not, the first thing will be, what will be their target? Is Javi coming to just stabilize? Because La Liga is still not far gone. It means they still have what it takes to win. So... It depends on what he brings. One of the things the fans want at first is 4-3-3. They don't care. Go back to 4-3-3 and let's play. Possession football. Then over time, we can now start thinking, okay, our play is getting better. We're scoring goals. Oh, we are scoring goals. Can we stop conceding goals? We've stopped conceding. Can we start winning? So Saudi Arabian League is completely, or Qatar is completely different from what is happening in Europe. And whatever is happening everywhere in Europe is completely different from Barcelona. So, but one thing is sure, if or when they sign Xavi, they will be calm. The fans, they would love to welcome their legend back. I won't be surprised if Xavi decides to bring some of the one or two of his old teammates, maybe bring Iniesta, come and join me. So, those are the right steps that could help him settle down for us. You know, come back in like Spain, I tell them Madrid, Barcelona, there are three trophies they are fighting for Spain. The La Liga, the Copa del Rey, and the Classico. You must not lose all. If you lose everything, you are definitely in trouble. The Classico loss was one of the problems Kuman had. Mm -hmm. They're losing. So, I think Xavi would bring, and if nothing, it will bring calm. But the question is, how long will the calm take before the fans start talking? But like Austin as well, I think I like Xavi. He's one of the players that is probably not well respected as a shield for his gameplay and everything. But a great footballer does not necessarily mean a great manager. Yeah, um, that has been proven time and time again. A great footballer doesn't necessarily translate to a great player. But the question uh, both of you have not answered his current employers, how long yeah. can they delay? <laughs> because it appears like they, the only thing they're saying is this guy has a contract. That's the only thing we are going to tell you. <laughs> Outside just, just want to be in the news, and they've been getting media mention, you know. They can't hold on to the guy for so long. And Javi has said it that it's just out of respect because he can just take a walk, you know what I mean? It, it, look, it's very positive about this Barcelona job. It, it's, it's flattering that Barca even wants him. And with what he has given to the club, he cannot say no. He's Spaniard. Also. He can never say no. So um, this is not player and club situation. This is a coach. So uh, maybe he might, just, he might just tell them, okay, if you don't want to let me go, I'll take a walk. But um, I love what he, he has done. And that's why I like Xavi. I said, look, I'm respecting my contract with this Saudi Arabian club. So let Barcelona and Al Sad, you know, solve their issue. When they've done that, it's up to me to, you know, now step up to take the job. But he's looking forward to the job. And he says um, he's very positive about it. And that's the mentality I, I think he should have. All right. That's a good place to uh, leave it uh, on the show. For first, I want to thank Bolu Amoni for his time on the show uh, today. Bolu, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, we'll do this again some other yeah, time. Yeah, sure. It's better being here. All right, that's the show. We, th we do hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to do today. Uh, of course, we'll be back here again tomorrow. Another hour talking sports from Lagos. I mean, everybody, bye. Bye bye now. That's the show. Thank you so much for watching. Let's do this again tomorrow. But until then, in London, I'm Austin O'Connor. And in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. <laughs>